its regular meeting of the 2016-2017 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. Politics is a battle of ideas. In the course of a healthy debate, we'll prioritize different goals and the different means of reaching them. Without some common baseline of facts, without a willingness to admit new information and concede that your opponent is making a fair point and that science and reason matter, then we're going to keep talking past each other, making common ground and compromise impossible. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? We have 12 present this evening. All the persons, Donahue, Heidemann, Schneider, and Holshue are all excused, and I want to thank all of you for making a special effort to get here tonight for our replacement meeting after the very icy Monday. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion passes. Are there any resignations this evening? None. Okay. And no other appointments? Next, we'll move on to the public forum. City Clerk. Um, first on the list this evening is Debbie Desmoulins. Debbie, if you could come forward, please. And Debbie, can you give us your home address? North 35th? Yes. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay. I'm here today to ask you as representatives of the... It's not working. It's not. It's okay, Chad. It's the problems in back. Okay. As representatives of the Taxpayers Commission of Chester Burden and as caretakers of the integrity of the city of Suburban, to refuse the Lord of the County request to build their hospital complex over the site where the Taylor Green has been for over 20 years. The Taylor Green was created for the North Chester Burden and the Taylor Road community of Suburban and its Taylor Stone conveniently placed in heavy use, taking the park for any reason except for horrible precedent. Other times when a city's parks were threatened by people living in the park and the neighbor, the council and citizens got together and voted for our children, young and old, by preserving these precious health clinics and churches. Once again, the integrity of Suburban is being threatened because our superintendent signed an infinity and non-disclosure agreement with Aurora about four or five years ago to keep the seal secret. We've been discovered in court as a heat factor along with social meeting violations that led the judge to decide in favor of the Taylor Green and the Taylor. There's no valid reason to sell the Taylor Green. The original claim that Taylor Green and Bates were selling this land was because the district badly needed the money. This is no longer the case since the $29 million referendum was passed in 2016. There is now no excuse to sell and build over our Taylor Green. Why does Aurora have both an restricted on the acre parcel and right next to the 33 acre parcel on the south side between Stall Road and Green Street, which is three times the size of the Taylor Green together? Uh, it's not to use it. Aurora's south side property is closer to I-43 than the Taylor Green. Having railroad tracks is not an issue. Patients can easily access the south side location by taking exit 120 and going a little bit north with no railroad track hindrance or any of the traffic lights that exist to get to the Taylor Green. Or Aurora can pay for a direct ramp access off I-43. Suburban needs medical services on the south side to accommodate all the industrial and residential growth there. Everyone should have equal access to health care and hospitals. Aurora should not discriminate against the population south of the railroad track. In fact, if the railroad tracks were truly such a hindrance to proper health care, this makes it even more imperative to build Aurora's medical complex on the south side. Two years ago, Aurora assured us all that there would be no hospital built on the Taylor Green and boasted about an increased tax base that we had built in for poor people. But now that Aurora's medical complex is attached to a hospital, it would be tax exempt. Yet another reason that we need to protect our Taylor Green. Read my many protest petitions 
Thank you, Debbie. Next on the list would be um, Ali Zay, game one. <coughs> Ali Zay, could you give me your home address, please? Okay, and you'll have five minutes. Water before it makes it on the ground, filtering runoff as natural holding ground, 
providing wildlife habitat being dwindled, by, being dwindled by development, mitigating flood and drought, and preserving wetland ecosystems. This environment, partly to which are underwater most of the year, is not suitable to build structures and the accompanying concrete and, and penetrable infrastructure that would alter forever this area. Have architects even been consulted? How in any way can we replace in its entirety as a sodden site, such as the Field of Dreams, with an impermeable surface like pavement, be considered technolo technolo technologically feasible or logically sound? These issues are the reason why we're coming here today. The Field of Dreams was zoned as a drainage way overlay district in order to fix our natural geology and landscape. It considers that percolation of precipitation takes place, preventing flooding of surrounding sites. This space, this space has been identified on city and state maps as important for wetlands and a small drainage way that used to be an actual stream back when this place was a farm field. Has the Common Council considered what will happen if water levels increase to the discharge rates <coughs> they were at when the Field of Dreams was established? This permanent, irreversible alteration of both parcels not only is contrary to the original careful planning of past commissioners that went into the zoning of the land, anything offered by Aurora for this area goes against the sustainability commitments entered into by the city of Sheboygan, which require foresight for future generations. And I would also like to add that the city of Sheboygan task force has actively campaigned for the promotion of the local food market. How does serving the public build their collective investments in the former community gardens on north side of Sheboygan in terms of expansion mentioned in the sustainability plan? Why have these productively planned plots been allowed to lie fallow for two years instead of just thriving agriculture? Excuse me, Ali Dave. Thank you for That's it for this evening. Thank you very much. Next item is uh, Mayor's announcements.
Okay, next we'll go on to the consent agenda. I'll, uh, they'll include items 2.2 through 2.14. Alderperson Wolf. Well, thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs and accept and adopt all RCs and pass all resolutions and, and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Uh, Alderperson Jose. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to have 2.14 broken out. To item what? 2.14. Okay. Okay, we'll separate 2. Point, uh, I'm sorry, 2.14. 2. 2.14. Okay. We'll take that one first. 2.14 is an RC by law and license. The Humans Referred General Ordinance Number 34 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue and Wolf repealing and recreating Section 2-35 of the Municipal Code relating to the privilege of the floor at common council meetings so as to give the City Administrator and the Director of Planning and Development the privilege of the floor and recommends that the ordinance be passed. I need a motion to that effect. Make a motion to Wolf. approve. Thank you for that second. motion and second. Okay, that's on the floor for further discussion. Alderperson Jose. <clears throat> yeah, I just uh, questioning the, the need for it. I, I believe this council can, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayor, um, can at any time make, somebody can make a motion and get a second to, uh, to allow the privilege for somebody to speak on a matter. Is, isn't that true? I'll defer to the city attorney on that. It is true. Uh, <coughs> much of Okay, I, I think I'm I'm going to vote against this just because I don't see the need for for extra privileges and the if it's not broke don't fix and I think I think it works quite well uh, you know granting whether it be uh, city officials city employees or even people and uh, members of the public uh, granting them access to speak uh, I think it works quite well the way it is so I'm going to be not going to be voting in favor of it. Thank you for those comments. Alderperson Lewandowski. I have a question about 2.8. Okay, well, well that'll have to hold then. Uh, I would just like the city attorney to clarify who else has privilege of the floor other than the two we're talking about granting it to. Um, right now, it is uh, the, the mayor, the city clerk, um, the chief of police or such other police officer in attendance, members of the Department of Engineering and Public Works, the city attorney, the city finance director, the treasurer, uh, editors of newspapers published within the city, reporters for the press who confine themselves to their professional duties, uh, everyone else that would, that would require a full Thank you very much. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I, I would like to just recommend I'm going to vote for it, and the reason I'm voting for it is because Daryl and Chad are part of the team. Um, to, to assist us in communicating and helping us to understand what's going on. Um, again, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, uh, Alderman, uh, Attorney uh, Adams, basically what we're asking to do here is basically allow them access to do what they're already doing, and that's to come in and talk um, upon request or when, whenever we have questions without having to waste time and have votes and approvals and all of that. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. I see no other lights then when I ask the clerk to call the roll. <coughs> I think I'll do the, the old fashioned one on this one. Okay. Dellinger? Aye. Bitters? Aye. Boren? Aye. Damro? Aye. Strawn? Aye. Herman? Aye. Jose? Aye. Odendowski? Aye. Rod? Aye. I'm sorry? Nay. Steele? Aye. Prester? Aye. And Wolf? Aye. Ten eyes, two noes. Motion passes. And then Alderperson Lewandowski? Yes, for uh, item 2.8, with the settlement with the federal government, I was just wondering which polling places were found not to meet ADA standards and what will be done for those polling places. 
city clerk, did you want to respond to that? Um, there were two places that this has happened already. It's been in place for quite some time. Uh, St. Paul's Church on the south side and St. Peter Claver were not, we were not able to do structural changes that the government wanted us to do because it's not our building. So we had, we were forced to move our polling locations to the senior center, which we've, or senior activity center, I'm sorry, which we've already done. And it has been done for well over a year. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, then we'll be voting on everything except for 2.14. Would the clerk please call the roll? Registering. Nothing showing up on my computer. I will die. Oh, Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items 3.1 through 3.9 will be referred to various committees. Under a section four resolutions, uh, 4.1 is a resolution by Alderperson Donahue and Wolf authorizing retaining outside counsel in the matter of Kurt Klessig and Mary Heitzman versus Anthony Hamilton and Brad, Brandon Kehoe, uh, City of Sheboygan, City of Sheboygan Police Department at all. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> I ask uh, to make a motion to suspend and pass resolution. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? because we have 21 days to reply to this, uh, this action. And, they all, and then all the person that Wolf made a motion to then to pass the resolution. Is there a second to that? Second. Thank you very much. That's before us for discussion then. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. I will die. Well, bye. Motion passes. Items 4.2 through 4.5 will be referred to various committees. Uh, under reports of committees, item 5.1 is an RC by law and licensing. Uh, stating that it, at its meeting on January 10th, your committee to whom was referred RO number 163 of 1617 by the city clerk voted to conditionally recommend that the Common Council not renew the taxicab driver license number 0741 held by Jason J. Shabara. Uh, Alderperson Drawn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the committee on two occasions uh, invited uh, Jason to, to join us. Uh, he declined both opportunities. And due to that and due to his uh, record of violations, <coughs> we as a committee uh, opted to not vote in favor. And I would ask that, the, uh, that we accept and adopt the report of the committee. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? We have a second. It's on the floor for further discussion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Motion passes. 
Item 5.2 is an RC by Public Works to whom was referred General Ordinance Number 36 of 1617 by Alderperson Bellinger and Theo creating Article 3 of Chapter 74 of the Municipal Code relating to impact fees and recommends that the attached substitute ordinance be passed. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adapt, and pass a substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Motion passes. Under ordinances, uh, item 6.1 and 6.2 will be referred to the Public Works Committee. Uh, <coughs> next one is other matters received after the agenda was published. City Attorney. Thank you. Uh, 7.1 <coughs> is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2017, June 30th, 2017, and June 30th, 2018. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 7.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a summons and complaint in the matter of Wells Fargo Bank N.A. versus Dennis M. Scheibel et al. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 7.3 is a resolution by Alderperson Wolf authorizing entering into an agreement with Lucas Milkey for planning and preliminary engineering services related to the expansion of the Sheboygan Business Center. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 7.4 is a resolution by Alderperson Bellinger authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for the purchase of two zero-turn commercial grade lawn mowers from the Motor Vehicle Department. That would be referred to the Public Works Committee. 7.5 is a resolution by Alderperson Wolf to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 2017 budget. That would be referred to the Finance Committee. 7.6 is a resolution by Alderperson Donahue uh, approving a Human Resources Department cell phone usage and bring it over by policy. That will be referred to the Salary and Grievances <coughs> Committee. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight. <laughs>